today we have Trinell Ball. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, he has he's been working in the consulting um, uh, technology field for over twelve years. He's really hyper connected to what's happening in technology, what's happening into mobility, um, and he's currently been at Toyota for how many years has it been? Like six, seven years? Oh, it's about 10 years now. 10 years, geez. <laughs> yeah, I guess you've been at Toyota ever since I've been in New York. Right? Yeah, yeah, wow. seems about right, yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, so it's, Trinell's at this interesting point where he's always, I felt like ever since I've known him, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in the last two, three, or I don't know how many years, but you've had this kind of remote lifestyle where you've, you've come into the office, but I don't know if it was more for showing face or because you had to, but you've always been a remote worker. Now, um, now it's like you're you you're forced into remote work. So, uh, wh like, what's that change been like from being an optional remote worker to a forced remote worker? And just talk about your, like what's been going on uh, as pre-COVID and post-COVID. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, Calvin. Um, so you know, the just like everyone else. Uh, I, I would say just like majority of people, I, you know, I had a life where I went into the office on a regular basis and what had changed, uh, I would say since 12, 2014, 2013, 2014 is that my, uh, business travel picked up quite a bit and uh, it, you know, as you can imagine being in international time zones, the jet lag and just trying to catch up with everything in different time zones, it really didn't make much sense for going into the office on a regular basis, especially given that my team and my management, they're all spread out, uh, around the country. Uh, so, so it, it was just a conscious choice to sort of go into the office as it was needed. So when I say needed, it's a meeting with someone that's coming in uh, to Manhattan or uh, uh, having face-to-face -face meetings uh, when we're trying to kick off a project or uh, look into important milestones uh, and prepare Right. Uh, so for major milestones, we will we would go into the you know, I would go into the office. But for the most part, just for going into the office, uh, you know, it, it had declined because it, it just wasn't productive for me. You know, it's it was uh, uh, if it, it was, you know, of course, it takes eats away time. Right. You have to commute. Uh, the hassle of going to get lunch and, you know, all these little uh, bits and pieces, right? Trying to find, you know, going to get a workout in, all these bits and pieces, these, these I, I like to call them, uh, and, I, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm noticing this more now, is this unnecessary stress that we sort of inject into our lifestyle because we have a pattern of going in, to the office, a culture, if I may say so, right? So that is something I learned to avoid. And I have to say, there's also, I, I, I realized in my past is that there's this value in actually having some face time. We as human beings, we, I feel like we need the human contact, the human connection. It, 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 it's sort of uh, we need that positive feedback from another person that they're on my side or uh, I am going in the wrong dire uh, right direction. And I think there are two groups of people. One group of people, they can potentially just thrive in sort of a silo. I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, and there's another group of people that feed off other people's energy. But both of these groups, they can feed off of the positive human feedback at all times, at sometimes, I should say, not all times, but sometimes. Now, 
fast forward, uh, COVID, uh, I think everyone is having to deal with this, right? I think the, the first thing first, it was sort of getting the infrastructure uh, ready. So uh, like banking and the financial sector, a lot of their work is, or, or if, you're in, if you're working for the DOD, if you're uh, designing uh, military technology, you know, a lot of it is securely protected on site, right? Right. So you have to figure out all of a sudden you have to start working from home. What do you do? So you have to figure all that technology issues adjust into your lifestyle. And what we learned is that the technology issue or from at least there may be uh, some sort of issues, but we pretty adapted pretty fast, right? We kind of, and, and, we don't really hear about any technology roadblocks that people have faced since they migrated to the home office environment. Uh, I just attended a conference last week. Uh, it was a 3000 people event, uh, one of the first of its kind. Uh, and it was a thought leader conference. So it's, you know, we're learning. There are certain things that we can do. So remotely and it's perfectly effective. For example, if you think about the conference industry, you can go for a panel discussion where you want to hear people talk. You can do that over the computer. However, for example, Consumer Electronics Show, the CES, right, which is you have to touch and feel gadgets. You have to be in an environment where you, you need that physical presence. So I think we'll be able to cut out a lot of waste in business travel. Uh, I think the overemphasis on meeting face to face uh, without extracting value. We will really look at, look into these, uh, we'll scrutinize them more than we ever done in the past. Before companies did these, uh, you know, they scrutinized business travel when there was an economic downturn, which is going mm -hmm. to be the case, right? Yep. And which is the case. And and then, yeah, travel can pick back up. I don't. I think that mentality is gone. I think if, even if you're economically thriving, you're in, from this point onward, you're going to say, okay, is this business trip really necessary, right? Mm. And I think a lot of waste, right? A lot of waste that we just inject into the economy that props up the economy. I mean, you know, there are industries that's, that are going to suffer as a result of this, right? the hotel and the airline and uh, uh, maybe the rental car industry, which is <laughs> struggling already, right? But, you know, it's for the right reasons because just because we are, you know, we're it, just because we should do some, it, it's good to do something or we think it's good to do something without put, putting in a lot of thought why it's good to do so. It, that behavior pattern in all aspects, I think it's going to change. And that's, that's sort of my take on we, we're really going to learn as citizens of the world on how to reduce waste because obviously we have seen some positive impacts as a result of this. And the first thing is for the first time, we can, you know, you can see this uh, skyline in Shanghai. You can see the skyline in, in Delhi, LA is labeled one of the cleanest cities in the world, right? So uh, the, the, the car crash, there are certain good things that are happening. And I think we will try to look at that and, uh, you know, try to trend that forward. I want to pick up on something that you kind of said pre and post COVID during these like face-to-face -face interactions. One of the things that I find most valuable and I think other people, it's the, well, one, the office, the value that the office provides is the camaraderie. So at Hiralam, we have a bunch of different contractors down in Ecuador and Peru, and we manage everybody from their homes. Um, the point, and I would still once a year or however sporadically, I would go down and visit and have like events and some like face-to-face -face interaction to develop that team building that, and like I said, camaraderie between us all. Um, uh, that's one thing that I see that I'm having to innovate on now and I'm seeing it uh, in different aspects. And then piggybacking on when you had your conference, because I was part of a conference with uh, investors and it was pre-COVID, it was supposed to be hosted in person, but because of the situation, they had it all online. 
one of the things that you that I missed out on and I had to try to force my hand in it. And I think other people do too. And like, as entrepreneurs, we don't mind doing it, but it's like the networking, right? At a conference and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're at CES, yeah, you're seeing all these cool gadgets, but it's really to pick up some business cards to get some business or for, in your case, people want to get your business and you want to find out what's the coolest new gadget to put into a, uh, to Toyota or something. Mm-hmm. How, like for me, it's like, unless the conference or someone is specifically saying, Hey, okay, everybody introduce yourselves, try and network. It's there's no natural way to network. Uh, you mean in physical conferences? No, no. In, in these remote conferences. Oh, so, so actually, um, actually I think, you know, so the conference I attended last mm-hmm. week, they had a networking, okay. uh, so what they would do, for example, they, you know, they can each lecture, right, that, or a discussion panel that they were hosting. Uh, after the end of it, they would sort of just match you up. Uh, you, you can network on your own, but other times they will just match you up where, so you're kind of um, into this, uh, I, I want to say force networking. So in in that case, it could be good, right? Because when you're at these venues, it, a lot of the times it, 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 it's when you're networking, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's sort of a a result of various variety of variables, right? You know, your mood, are you feeling up for it? Uh, You're trying to gauge the person's body language, you know, is this someone that's worthwhile for me to talk to? Um, you know, it's some, someone you may find interesting, but discussions can drag on. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of, uh, sort of (laughs) make yourself unavailable. There are all these factors that are at play and there's a large chunk of people. Sometimes they're just left out of these networking opportunities. I mean, usually the networking venues that I'm going to, they, they just give you some wine and some cheese and says, now, and I go meet people. Right. And, (laughs) Get and, drunk and meet right. some people. You, you, you know, meet people. And who am I talking to? Uh, okay, I, I'm into, uh, you know, I want to develop the next mobile app for gaming. And all of a sudden, I, you know, I'm just having wine and cheese. And there's a really cool guy who's, who's on your level. And he is, uh, you know, he's building tables and chairs. He's a, you know, he's heading off the carpenter business. It's great that you network, you guys had a great <laughs> chat, but did any value come out of that? So maybe there's a better way they can actually do that online, right? Because they have all this digital data in the background where they can start matching you. Uh, I think there are some cold networking where they're doing what, where they're just randomly matching you to so get, mm-hmm. getting you out of your com- comfort zone. And then you can sort of, profiles, no profiles about people that are available in the networking chat room. So for example, this person is also in the mobile gaming industry, right? And has been in this industry for five years and currently is looking for partner A, B, and C to expand. Bingo, right? This may be your ideal candidate that me as a developer of for mobile games, just, just getting into the business, Maybe they're right. It's a worthwhile conversation to be had. I'm, I'm not sure, but I can ping that person. So there could be some, you know, there, there could be some innovation, but to your point, but there's this also the lack of uh, sort of, you know, just being human, right? And, mm-hmm. and it's just trying to understand the vibe of this person. You can't do it in a room, I guess, but it, it, it's not the same. And, and I think it's too early for, for us to even understand uh, if it will be effective or not. I mean, one of the things is that, you know, we have been so used to things uh, that have been working for us for a long time and we're comfortable with it, right? It's, it's just like the economy, right? There, you know, it's, it's, hey, this works this way, so we can't, let the system be disrupted. Let's just dump money into this, right? I don't want to digress, but 
it's, <laughs> it's human nature to keep things uh, working as they were. But yeah. I think if we are at the crossroads, and I have never seen this in my lifetime. I mean, we have put enormous value on human life if you compare this to the 1918 flu, where they were fighting wars where it's more of a priority than saving people's lives. And this has never been done before in the history of mankind, right? I, I want to say. And it's really, really, I think, I think it's, it's, if, if people are looking at us from, if they're an alien civilization and they're looking at this young breed of species of humans yep. and they're saying, are these, is this species responsible to, for their environment, for the technology, for science? I think this is a positive indication to them. They said, okay, these people do value things that are bigger than just themselves, right? So I think it's a, we are at a crossroad and we're going to examine things and try new things that are going to test our comfort level. But I think it's early, too early to tell what will work and what may not. I mean, I know we were discussing networking, but there are going to be different uh, aspects of technology, societal issues, cultural issues, uh, professional work-related issues, we're going to be testing the boundaries of. No, for sure. And as humans um, and as people, we're going to try and fail a bunch of different times of like what's going to, what we're doing and what's going to work. We have to innovate. Manufacturing companies, like they are completely 100% in the office. Now they have to go to this remote lives, I mean, this remote work. And so now we're transitioning to this, okay, we have to go remote or for some of the physical like delivery people, we have to be this, we have to be physical, but we also have to maintain remoteness in a way. So we're socially, I mean, we're physically there, but we're having to socially remote keep distance and re keep ourselves remote for other interactions to just remain safety and keep safe protocols in place so this is after we're gonna change how things were not I, I I'd be very surprised to see companies adopting a complete 100% office lifestyle after this because mm -hmm. you have you're, we're gonna have to have these protocols I don't know when we're going to I don't I don't know enough about this disease to know that this is just completely gone for all of eternity where we need to keep some safety and also like look at yourself and as when you went from a, an office space to okay i'm traveling a lot i need to have this remote beams and then you're looking at people that used to go to the office like you can even look down on wall street where they had to go to the office all the time and now they get this remote experience I mean, how much time have you, I mean, I guess you've been pretty remote, but just like consider the times that you did have to go to the office. How much time did you waste just with the commute, getting your lunch, figuring out when you're going to work out? Like what was, how much time are you saving now in those aspects, th that little portion? Well, I, I think a tremendous amount, right? Because it's, 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 just, it's not just the time. Um, it's hard to put a quantitative value on it, especially like if your work and your personal life is sort of intertwined. When I say mm -hmm. personal life, it's just you know, like personal things. Like, um, for example, like, you know, you get up, you have to catch a particular train at a particular time. You have to be in a, a meeting at a particular time. So this is your stress level. <laughs> yeah. It's starting to kick in, right? Yeah. That can be, uh, uh, you know, that can't be a good thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then your the, the cost that you have to spend on transportation and the, there are other fallout effects. Right. You're, you're contributing to the congestion. You're, you're contributing to um, you, you, pollution, you, pollution. Right. You're you know, it's there's an, all these negative uh, factors that go into that whole uh, routine. And so. So, you know, you you have to sort of uh, take all of that into account and you, and, and, 
and you have to say, you have to really, really question, uh, is this really worth it? And I think, I hope uh, after this, right, we really, really take a hard look at the good things that happen as a result of this and, and examine. Uh, so, for example, we have been uh, talking about the four, uh, four day work week for a while now, right? And mm -hmm. people have been talking about that. Years, uh, yeah. For years. Decades. And, and this may be a good opportunity to, to uh, uh, look into that because people are saving a lot of time. And I think companies, they have different interests now too because a lot of them have to consider pay cuts, right? So, you, you know, there's, so if you say, uh, okay, we're going to give you a pay cut. So a lot of some of these companies are adopting a four day work week now. Mm -hmm. And, but you know, in this four day, right? You, all of a sudden you opened up a day and you, in your, in that, that potentially gives you uh, ability to be innovative, creative, uh, do interesting things for the economy, move humanity and the world forward. And, and in the four days that you're working, you're working, you're, you're doing it in a stress-free way where you're not damaging uh, the planet while doing so and also your health. So, and potentially being more productive, right? So, so you know, it's, it's, there, there are different aspects to consider and, and then you try to balance that with, okay, we're not meant to be cooped up inside all day. We are meant to feed off of people's energy, the, the camaraderie, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And how, you know, a network and go out to dinner together and enjoy lifestyle. I think the social aspect of what we did is, and, and which relies not on virtual meetings, but mm -hmm. on physical contact will, shouldn't go away. Uh, no matter what the risk is. Uh, but we have to learn to live with uh, the pandemic. And I'm sorry, but this is not the solution. The, the solution is to prepare for it in advance so we can be in a position to not completely shut down the economy, not completely ignore people with other diseases that may die as a result of this, not ignore kids that the only source of their meal is to go into, go into school, you know, to, to, to be in school, to have that, right? Not what can we do in a future situation where there's a future pandemic just on one thing, right? This yeah. is the thing that we have to learn to live with. Uh, thought leaders around the world have warned about this, but they have absolutely done nothing. And yeah. whether it's the current administration or the past administration, nothing has been done about it. And now we have to prepare to live with something like this, right? Yeah, and I mean, I think this was our Band-Aid solution because of who right. we are as human beings and we had to do this. Yeah, we, like, I would say as people, and I'm gonna make governments who are handling it fairly well because they had this, they had a pandemic earlier. Right. You look at time. We need to be even more engaging. And the best way to do that is with this virtual way in this situation right now. But in the future, when we have the ability, when we're, when we know how to maintain this, we don't have to just socially, I mean, physically isolate ourselves from the world. I mean, we're seeing it I mean, I was just at Central Park, you're at Central Park. I think people in New York are going stir crazy because they have 500 square feet of living space for two people or whatever it is. Right. And we're not, people don't do well in small confines for, for a long period of time. Right. And so right. that's why they're just like, they might skirt the rules because they're like, I have to get out of the situation. And they go to Central Park and they're, they just need their reprieve. But like you said earlier, we need to have our dinner. We want to have dinner with other people. Like I haven't seen you in four months and you're just a few miles away. Yeah. And, be, and maybe we could go get a takeout or something. But still, that's, we, 
there's just too much variables that go into place. And so I think after this, we our future of work is going to have this somewhere in between of, yeah, we have to consider safety protocols, but we also have to consider our social protocols. And our social protocols are, we do, people do need this physical touch. Um, so, I mean, I think that is a, a very important thing that we can't just have this virtual touch. Yeah, it's great, but there's something inherently good about being interactive, seeing someone right next to me. And so we're gonna have to, after this, our future of work is going to have this remote in-person kind of lifestyle um, or where we encourage a remote in-person experience. You've had to do it. Like, I mean, when pre pre COVID you were, your main offices were in Tokyo. So you, like you often had calls talking to each other, but they're like, no, Trinell, you're a valued employee. We want to see you. Right. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, it was sort of expected. You cannot do something as well as you do in person mm -hmm. or to do this uh, digitally. And I think that framework and for the right reason, that it needs to be reevaluated. And I, I just don't mean for saving, you know, for looking at a company's bottom line. Mm -mm. And I think in from a, uh, from, from a different standpoint, and I'm, I'm not discouraging social interaction as you, and I agree with you, we're not socially distanced, we're physically distanced, but socially engaged. That's, you know, that, I, you know, that, that species, we need to do that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the doctors that are doing research across the world, they're sharing information at even a rapid rate now than it has ever been done before. Mm -hmm. So, we, we need that to thrive and to grow. Um, yesterday, when I went to Central Park, seeing people around, it just made me feel alive again, it made me feel better again. Not everything is doom and gloom, right? So, so you know, w w we need that. But on the other hand, let's balance all the waste, all, all the negativity that came as a, as a result of our behavior in just consuming, you know, abundance. We need, you know, we're not happy with, uh, you know, one ply of toilet paper roll, pun intended, <laughs> right? One ply of toilet paper sheet. We need a hundred, right? hundred ply. You know, myself, it's all about me, 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 me. I mean, it's, and I think, I, I don't think we're, we're doing this intentionally, but really need to investigate, examine, scrutinize this behavior pattern. It's, it, it's not, it, it's not constructive for the well-being and sustainability for the planet and others. Oh, hundred percent. I think kind of to diverge a little bit, but I recently saw, uh, uh, I saw this movie called the platform. Did you okay. see that yet? Not yet. It's oh, essentially yeah. that it's human behavior is me, mm -hmm. me, me. And if you keep taking, you give nothing left to the people after you. Right. Right. So just what you said, if you're like, Hey, I need all the hundred ply toilet paper and you take it all for yourself. Well, the person that comes right after you, well, now they're left with granted single ply could be just fine. But they're like, uh, now I'm stuck with single ply. Now they take all the single ply and the person comes out after them, there's no ply. They have to use their hands. They have to do something else. So it's like, we, like you said, how are we going to investigate? How are we going to come as a humanity to say, maybe I don't need all the, I just need what can sustain myself for now or a certain level and then leave some for the next person. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that, that it's all about me and me consuming. It's not going to work either. It's not sustainable because that person, right. I don't know platform, but I've heard of the, I mean, I haven't seen platform, but I've heard of the concept. They're going to rise up with pitchforks, right. And, and, and sickles and come after you and take it. So this is not a sustainable system. 
And, you know, I think that's at the heart of all of this, right? Uh, this is a, if you go to third world countries, right? It, this is a rich man's disease. Uh, you know, I think an Indian doctor, he tweeted out, he said, foreign travelers are going around the world and spreading this disease and these people that live on a dollar a day, you tell them to quarantine when they don't know where their meal is going to come from. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not for them. So, you know, it, you see the, the inequality, right. In, in inequality, the, not just income, but the resource inequality that is, has taken shape. It's just not sustainable. My well being is not, only dependent on my well-being it's dependent on others well-being mm -hmm. no correct yeah. um yeah any lasting uh thoughts that you want to give I, I i know you have to get going so i i mean it's super thoughtful uh uh and i just wanted to let you share anything else that you had uh with the the viewers no, I think, you know, I, I, we, we're, we're going to, um, uh, as species, we're going to come out of this and, and hopefully we will rethink uh, what we need and, and, and how we can help others bring us up. And, and no matter what the political platform is, and I know... Uh, whatever it may be, you know, whatever the, whatever the year it is, uh, whatever the decade it is, but we have demonstrated the ability to come together, which is really hopeful. And we can come out of this and help others and do good that is connected. You know, everything is connected. And if we are looking at things through different lens, we're not just going to improve one aspect. We're going to improve everything, right? I mean, the private sector leadership uh, before the government made any calls, the reason the social distancing is working in the U.S. is because private sector stepped up long before the government did. Mm -hmm. Good things. And I think... It's if we can remember what we learned from this, we embed this, you know, we put up a poster, <laughs> you know, every day to remind us of uh, what happened, right? Then hopefully we will do this and hopefully we don't forget what took place as we're flattening the curve, right? For sure. Yeah. Love it. Thank you, Trinell. Yeah. Uh, so, much you so much for your time. time. And uh, hopefully see you in a month. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or sooner. Hopefully sooner. Hope.